When we talk about colonizing the solar system, most people imagine a grand future. Bases on Mars, floating cities above Venus, asteroid mining, and even humans exploring distant moons like Europa or Titan. But as much as these ideas fill science fiction and the dreams of many space enthusiasts, the reality is quite different. And as much as I'm passionate about astronomy, I have to admit, colonizing the solar system in practice is far from becoming reality. It might just be an impossible dream for our time. And I'm not even talking about interstellar travel, which involves such absurd distances that even the most advanced technologies could never overcome them. I'm talking about our own cosmic backyard, the solar system. When we observe the planets around us and seriously analyze the conditions necessary for real colonization, optimism gives way to a harsh and uncomfortable truth. Think about it. Why would we settle on worlds where we can only survive inside spacesuits or pressurized modules? With lethal temperatures outside and atmospheres that can kill us in seconds, what's the real point of living in an environment where a single hole in your suit gives you just a few minutes to live? There are usually three major justifications for colonizing other planets. Advancing scientific research, exploring and using new natural resources, and transforming hostile planets into new homes. The famous process of terraforming. Among these reasons, only one seems reasonable to me. Science. Exploring, studying, and searching for life beyond Earth are valid goals. And for that, we don't need colonies. We can use probes, robots, and increasingly advanced technology to reach this goal without risking many human lives. Now about the idea of mining asteroids or extracting resources from distant planets? Taking people to hostile locations millions of miles away to extract resources we already have here, and with much more safety, is an illusion. The costs of transporting materials back to Earth would be absurdly high. The only way it would make sense is if those resources were used right there, locally, by a fixed population. But what planet could really house millions of people with their families as if it were a new home? If you know of a world like that in our solar system, please tell me. Because as far as I know, there is none. If someone still thinks about terraforming Mars, for example, know that this process would cost so much that it would be more feasible to turn our own deserts into forests or build underwater cities. At least here on Earth, we already have oxygen, adequate pressure, and a stable biosphere. This process could also take thousands of years. In practice, once we realize that the stars are out of our reach and that the nearby planets are true, uninhabitable hells, our attention will return to just two places. The Moon, which is very close, and Earth's orbit, where satellites and space stations can help improve life down here. Now, if you're still not convinced, let's take a closer look at the main bodies in the solar system and understand why the idea of colonizing them is so unfeasible. Starting with Mercury, the planet closest to the Sun. The shortest distance between it and Earth is about 56.5 million miles. It has a diameter of 3 miles and almost no atmosphere. Gravity is only 38% of what we have on Earth, and temperatures can range from negative 292 degrees Fahrenheit at night to an incredible 806 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. A single day on Mercury lasts 88 Earth days. On one side, there's hellish heat. On the other, a frozen desert. On top of that, its proximity to the sun makes access both dangerous and extremely expensive. Even if there are ice reserves in the polar regions, a base would have to be built there. But for what? There's no logical or economic reason to do so. My guess? In 2033, a probe will be sent to the Twilight Zone near the North Pole. Some data will be collected, many scientific articles will be published, and then humanity will simply lose interest. By 2040, not even orbiters will be sent there anymore. Colonization potential? Zero. Now Venus. Even though it's the planet most similar to Earth in size, it's a true death trap. It's about 26.1 million miles from Earth, has nearly the same diameter and similar gravity. But that's where the similarities end. The atmospheric pressure at its surface is 92 times greater than Earth's, equivalent to the pressure nearly 0.62 miles deep in the ocean. The average temperature is 869 degrees Fahrenheit, more than enough to melt lead. The atmosphere is composed almost entirely of carbon dioxide with clouds of sulfuric acid. The sky is forever covered in a yellowish haze. It's impossible even to land there safely, let alone build any type of base. The only tiny chance would be sending crude balloons to float in the upper atmosphere. 
But to live there? Forget it. Colonization potential? A miserable one out of ten. And what about the moon? Here, things start to look a little different. The moon is very close, about 238.8 miles away, and we've already visited it. Its gravity is about one-sixth of Earth's. It has no atmosphere, and temperatures range between minus 243 degrees Fahrenheit and 253 degrees Fahrenheit. A lunar day lasts nearly 30 Earth days. Despite the difficulties, it's a good candidate for a scientific outpost. It's possible to extract oxygen, water, and fuel, and its proximity allows for fast communication and short-term missions. We could install large-scale solar panels, build radio telescopes on the far side, and use its gravitational advantage to launch long missions into the solar system. We could even consider space tourism. However, living permanently on the moon would still be extremely challenging. Small scientific bases? Absolutely. Entire communities? Highly unlikely. Colonization potential? Five out of ten. And when we talk about Mars, here's the darling of space exploration. At a minimum distance of about 34.2 million miles, it has a diameter of 4.2 miles and gravity equal to 38% of Earth's. Its temperatures range from negative 195 degrees Fahrenheit to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The atmosphere is thin and mostly made of CO2, which means you can't breathe there. Although it has frozen water and seasons similar to Earth's, the extremely low atmospheric pressure means astronauts need spacesuits for any activity outdoors. There's no magnetic field to protect against solar radiation, and trips to Mars can take months with current technology. Also, due to orbital dynamics, anyone going to Mars would have to wait over a year to return. That means taking supplies and equipment to survive completely independently. We might be able to build the first scientific bases there in a decade, but living on Mars as a permanent colony? Unlikely. It would be like trying to live in the Sahara Desert, but with toxic air, freezing temperatures, and no help around. Colonization potential? Three out of 10. If Mars, with all its so-called advantages, is still a terrible option for colonization, then imagine Ceres, the largest object in the asteroid belt. Many people forget about it, but we don't. It's about 164.7 million miles from Earth and only 584 miles in diameter. Gravity there is ridiculously low, only 3% of what we feel here. There's no atmosphere, and temperatures average around negative 159 degrees Fahrenheit. Many dream that Ceres, and other asteroids, will become the next space gold rush. People talk about exploring rare metals and valuable minerals. But again, who would go there to mine? How would you transport workers to a place like that? With what infrastructure? At what cost? And even if they managed to extract something, what would they do with it? Bringing it back to Earth would be financially unviable. Use it locally? But locally where? And by whom? In the end, the costs would be absurd, and any profit would be swallowed by logistics. Colonization potential? Zero. Maybe in 20 years, some agency will send a probe to drill into an asteroid and bring back a few pounds of material. But after that, the project will be forgotten just like Ceres. Now let's talk about Europa, one of Jupiter's largest moons. At 391.5 million miles from Earth, it has a diameter of about 1.9 miles, very low gravity, 13% of Earth's, and an icy surface with average temperatures of negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit, almost no atmosphere. Europa fascinates scientists for one reason. It's believed to have a subsurface ocean beneath its frozen crust. This ocean could, in theory, host life, but it's just a theory. To confirm it, we'd have to drill through miles of ice or try to collect samples ejected by geysers. A mission for robots, no doubt. No human will be setting foot there anytime soon. Colonization potential? One out of ten. Titan, Saturn's largest moon, is another place that draws attention. It's 795.6 million miles from Earth, about 3.2 miles in diameter, and has gravity equal to 14% of Earth's. The average temperature is minus 292 degrees Fahrenheit. What's surprising is that Titan has a thick atmosphere, composed of nitrogen and methane, and the surface pressure is even higher than on Earth. It rains there, and there are rivers, lakes, and seas. 
but all made of liquid methane and other hydrocarbons, not water. It's an exotic and, at the same time, hostile environment. You can't breathe, you can't plant crops, and you can't live normally. Still, some scientists say that if you ever needed to make an emergency landing in the outer solar system, Titan would be the best place to do it. But let's be honest, that's very far from meaning colonization. We've already sent a small probe, Huygens, and soon the Dragonfly mission will send a flying drone to explore its surface. That will be incredible for science. But humans there? Never. Colonization potential? Two out of ten. At most, it'll be a natural theme park for robot explorers. And what about Pluto, the eternal outcast that lost its planet status in 2006? Located in the Kuiper Belt, Pluto is almost 3.7 billion miles from Earth. Just getting there with current technology would take decades. It's only 1.4 miles in diameter, has gravity of 6% of Earth's, temperatures that reach negative 382 degrees Fahrenheit, and a thin atmosphere made of methane. When the New Horizons probe passed by in 2015, it revealed incredible landscapes, surprising geological formations, and a world much more complex than we had imagined. But everything there presents a challenge. Everything is hard. Everything is extreme. And most of all, everything is very, very far away. Colonization potential? Zero. More probes will likely be sent to study its origins, but no human will ever walk there. Faced with all this, you might be thinking, aren't we being too pessimistic? Maybe. It could be that 50 years from now, someone will watch this video and laugh, just like we laugh today at those who said humans would never fly. But it's also true that a bit of realism is healthy, especially when dealing with topics as grand as space colonization. Dreaming is important, but understanding the limits of reality is essential. We're not saying we should stop exploring, stop sending probes, or stop doing science. On the contrary, we should keep investing more and more in knowledge, innovation, and missions that expand our understanding of the universe. But we also need to know how to distinguish what's possible from what's just a beautiful fantasy. In the end, it's better to be pleasantly surprised than deeply disappointed. What truly makes sense right now is investing in the Moon as a scientific and technological platform, exploring Earth's orbit with space stations that improve life down here and sending artificially intelligent robots farther and farther to discover, study, and understand the cosmos. Then, maybe one day, in a truly distant future, we can think again about colonizing space, but with our feet on the ground and science as our guide. If you found this topic interesting, I'm leaving other videos in the description. But what about you? What do you think of all this? Do you agree that colonizing the solar system is just a beautiful but unrealistic dream? Or do you believe I'm being too pessimistic and we can still make it happen? Leave your opinion in the comments. And if you want to keep exploring the universe's mysteries with us, check out the other videos here on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and share to help us keep producing even better content. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.